such an introduction and then you come in front, people start thinking you're a troublemaker. Uh, but um, I want to welcome the group, Rice. Um, we welcome you to the land of the bread. What do we say, church? Amen. Please do not tell them about what we do outside church. <laughs> they might start Googling. Uh, then they might think we are not good people, but welcome. Okay. I am connected to the country of Botswana in many ways. Um, we have a chief in Botswana. I should have been there last week, Monday. Chief Liswani. Uh, he had his 50th anniversary, but I couldn't make it. I have my aunties married in Botswana that lived there for a very long time. Um, we also share the Chobe River, which runs in my veins. Um, <laughs> is the High Commissioner here? Did he leave? Okay. Um, I also um, know that I see my elder. Elder, thank you. God bless. I, I saw cars with red plates. Then I knew it should be the elder. <laughs> Um, so, Rise, we give you a very special welcome. May God bless your ministry. I didn't uh, get a privilege to listen to your music yesterday. I just saw on, on someone's status that they are so powerful that they came with their PA system. <laughs> yeah, amen. amen. Um, YD, thank you for your invitation, 12th anniversary. When I was looking at what I could share on, it's not a sermon. I looked at Luke and saw that at the age of 12, Jesus Christ was taken by his parents to the temple. And then I tried to understand what that meant. And I came across some writings uh, that say in the Jewish culture, Hebrew culture, when a boy turned 12, he became a man. Can I get a name in from, from the boys who should have been men a long time ago? <laughs> he was now called son of the law and son of God. And um, the Jews, up to now, there is a special ceremony they do for boys who turn 12. Among the things they do is to tell these boys what manhood is. <coughs> they tell them to obey their parents. So, um, why did I think it's time you rise. It's time you rise that you sing internationally. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I think Oponganda elders, you can leave them alone now. It's time YD becomes a national group. I think Namibia is waiting to see what YD can do for the country. Um, let me leave it there. My sharing comes from 2nd Samuel. Uh, chapter 2, 2 Samuel chapter 2. Pastor Ima Kumbili is here. He just recently trained us on how to preach. So Pastor, if I disappoint you, I apologize. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 2. We'll just read four verses. And then we sit and enjoy the music. Second Samuel chapter 2, read verse 2, 3, 4, and 9. Verse 2 says, in fact, we'll take it from verse 1. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Where shall I go up? And he said unto Hebron. So David went up. Uh, we'll continue from verse 3. And his men that were with him did David bring up. Every man with his house, with his household. And they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. And the men of Judah came, and they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jabesh Gilead were they that buried Saul. We'll skip and go to verse 8. 
But Abner, the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. And he made him king over Gilead and over the Asherites and over Jezreel and over Ephraim and over Benjamin and over all Israel. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Our short sharing is entitled, Rise Like David. Rise Like David. We all know that David had faced Goliath as the biggest test of his life. And when he faced Goliath, the Bible says King Saul could not fight Goliath. And David came, he heard how for 40 days and 40 nights, grown up men above the age of 12, who people in the village thought they had gone to war. But for 40 days, these men would run in a trench. The ladies at home would be saying, my husband went to fight. Our wives, I wish you know. <laughs> Let's leave it alone. <laughs> Every man is brave before the wife. But there are things people know that you don't know. And these men were celebrated, decorated their soldiers. But for 40 days and 40 nights, they kept running. Every morning when Goliath comes, he insults them. They run in a trench and hide. Until a young man came by the name David. When he came, he saluted them and he was surprised that men took cover. He said, how long has this nonsense been going on? I think that's the... You made me that. They said to him, it has not only happened once. Young man, it has been happening for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. But back home, we thought you are busy fighting. They said, no, we are busy running into the trenches. <laughs> and why did that's a challenge? There are many Seventh-day Adventist groups that has been singing for long and has remained in the trenches. When they started, God had destined great things for them. But they got swallowed in the politics of the church. Pastor, you'll forgive me. Service request issue. You know how elders regulate us, but they're not regulated. <laughs> Let's leave that alone. Um, others are saying he has not been an elder. I have been. I have a problem with elders even when I'm one of them. We have a system in the church that regulates good work. But that system sometimes has been hijacked. That groups that should have become very big have been reduced in the name of order. And I wish we would just visit these elders and see whether there is order in their homes. Amen? Amen. Let's leave it alone. So David says, what will be given to this young man when he fights Goliath. You know, there are times in life when the challenge is so big and when you ask for a prize, people think you're interested in the money, not the fight. So many started thinking, no, the young man is just looking for. What will be given to one man who will face him? They said the king promised that if you kill Goliath, you will be given a privilege to marry the king's daughter. Sometimes, the cost of war is higher than the benefit. The, the, the King Saul raised the benefit to the one who was going to fight to such an extent that he was willing to give his daughter away to ugly men. Because they did not know who was going to face Goliath. When you see a man battering the face and the beauty of his beautiful daughter to an unknown man, don't think he's a kind man. Saul was willing to do anything to overcome Goliath. And David said, I can do it. Why be? I think you can do it. Amen? Amen. You have proven. But Eliab, the firstborn, you know the firstborn in church? Eliab said, David, daddy sent you to bring us food. Go back home. 
David, this war is for men, not for boys. But earlier, if you are a man, why don't you face Goliath? And there was commotion until somebody said, please, can you take this little fella to King Saul? This little young man, David, was taken. Sometimes you make so much noise, but your statue does not agree with your noise. I've gone around preaching a bit. I go to certain churches. When I greet people, they say, ah, oh, we thought Mudabed is big. I say, wow. <laughs> because somehow in Africa, size presupposes wisdom. Even my own son, my last born, last born is in grade one. He came home traumatized. Daddy, the, the principal is it's big. He's a huge man. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that's how we grew up. In my hometown, all the principals, you know, were big. <laughs> Because many times we mistake size for substance. And David disturbed them, small as he was. You know when you are supposed to see the king, and it's an important matter. King Saul expected to see a man like Cosmos, my brother. You know these muscles, you know, I've said this and I'll say it again. There are many brothers in the church who wake up early in the morning, go to the gym. They lift heavy things when nobody has sent them. <laughs> now that's okay. But what will it profit you and me to have muscles and spiritually be dwarfs? We have a lot of good looking men who appear strong. But God looks in the heart and says, who has the character I want? Too many beautiful women in the church. As they walk in, you can see the beauty. Let me leave it alone. Um, I don't want to take much of your time, but why be? Rise like, like David. And when David was presented to King Saul, King Saul could not believe it. Is this, are you the one who's coming to inform us the man is still coming? You know that introduction? <laughs> You know that introduction in, in Africa. You are the main person, but they ask, are you the driver for the preacher? <laughs> and David says, I am the one. And after they agreed, reluctantly, David killed who? Goliath ran quickly, took Goliath's sword, cut his head, brought the head, and knelt down and saluted King Saul. The running into trenches stops now. The whole camp was very happy, not because David won, because he took over their fears. You need to be very careful in life. There are victories that you need to be careful to celebrate. Sometimes people celebrate that which you have removed, not the work you have done. Why not? And David thought they were grateful that he put his life on the line for them. They were grateful they were no more going to be running to the trenches. And how do we know this? When David went back, Adventist Women Ministry, with purple colors, they started singing, David, you are the man, Saul, you are the boy. And it came to Saul's mind. My enemy is David. Why did he rise above the noise? Let the Spirit of God be your filter. And when David thought people were going to celebrate him, Saul chased after him. Now, before I come to a close, remember the title is Rise Like? For the next 10, 15 years, David was on the run. Anointed, but on the run. From who? King Saul. Sometimes in the church. We have powerful people who are not anointed. They carry a lot of power. Allow them to be like Saul. Because God knew when and how he was going to raise David. Why did he rise like David? And one day, David was cornered. He tried to run away. He couldn't. Until he found a little cave. He went inside. And King Saul could have gone to kill him. You know what God did? Read your Bibles. God gave Saul spiritual diarrhea. And Saul said to his men, I need to go to the loo. 
He went in, he removed his gown, he sat down. May the Lord anoint your imagination. He sat down. <laughs> then the man of David said, this is your opportunity to kill him. And David says, I dare not touch the anointed of elders, my fathers. Sometimes we give you a lot of respect because of the anointing, but not your manners. Amen. Amen. I'm a father of five kids. My firstborn is 24. And I know what that means. Age is not always wisdom. Yes. The people from Botswana are saying, is this the way Namibians are? Yes, welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome. Amen. Amen. But I want us to follow closely as I close. They rise like there are times God will give you an opportunity to hurt those who have aggrieved you. Let them pass. Fighting is not always a sign that you are strong. Choose your fights wisely. There are men who have been told by their wives, leave that story. Don't insult people here. You know? And, and Mama says it with politeness. Because she knows Papa has no strength. Leave that story. <laughs> because you know what studies show? Men who bully their wives, they don't bully other men. The taxi driver cuts in front of them and the wife is waiting. Do what you do at home, but you don't know. Okay, we leave that for men who abuse their wives, amen? There is a time for every dog that thinks it runs the show. Yeah. And David says, I will not kill him. He cuts from his, 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 his gown. And when Saul goes out, David shouts, King Saul, why are you following a fly like myself? And he takes out a piece of that cloth. He says, if I wanted to kill you, I would have done it. And Saul put it tense. Like many church systems in the country, we are sorry when they don't mean it. We would have allowed you to see, we are sorry. The church board did not sit in time. I think you understand what I mean. The pastor and the others at the conference, I'm also at the conference. I want to advise us policy should not stifle God's work. Service yeah. request. The Lord cannot bow down to systems. Yeah. Systems need to bow down to God. Ah, yeah. uh, let me leave it. <laughs> but why do you rise like? Yeah. Again, Saul repeated. Now, this is where I want us to pay attention. Saul repeated again, following who? This time, the Bible says, God gave King Saul deep sleep. Did what? Did sleep and slumber. Next to King Saul was a man called Abner. A-B-N-E-R. Please remember that man. Abner. He was the chief of the defense force of King Saul. But even this sleep came to him also. There are people in church, why be, who think if they don't give you approval to do God's way, that you will still fail. You know people like that? Because God has given them a privilege to be pastors, to be elders, to be conference presidents. They are starting to overstep. Those are the abners. David came with his commander. He found King Saul sleeping and snoring. You know what his commander said to him? David. Is it is my timer? Okay. David. He says, David, last time Saul came and you said you can't kill him. This time, give me permission to kill him. I'm not killing him with my own sword. I will use his own sword. It's here. Give me permission. You know what David said? He's anointed. Don't touch him. When his time comes, he will die. Take the sword, take the water. He ran away. He shouted, King Saul, wake up. When King Saul woke up, David says, here is your, if I wanted to kill you, I would have done it. Stop following me. You know who got offended? Abner got more offended than King Saul. 
There are people in the church today who take things personal more than God who came to die for us. <laughs> in the church. They, they want to, they, they catch a lot on spiritual things. <laughs> Beloved, God is big. All of us are small. When you start operating above the church and above God to think wisdom is the only gift given to you, you are about to be surprised. Why did Rise. David says, Abner, you deserve to be killed. You are supposed to protect who? The king. But you were found sleeping. That's embarrassing, right? Let's conclude. What do we know about Abner? Saul got killed, but Abner did not die. Do you think Abner was a true commander? If he was supposed to protect the life of King Saul, he should have died before King But he survives. Jonathan, who was a good man, dies. But Abner, the terrible one, survives. And when Abner reaches home, you know what he did? He looked for a son of, of, of Saul, who was from a side plate. You, you know that language. <laughs> he went to look for an illegitimate, illegitimate son because he was bruised. Some wars we fight in the church are not spiritual. The brothers are just bruised. They are bleeding on those who did not cut them. Very angry and harsh. Abna decided to take a young man by the name Ishboshet and told him, I'm going to make you a king in the place of your father. Why did? As you rise like David, be careful. Satan will offer you great offers to rise, but pray for discernment. The foundation might not be strong. I've read to you, the Bible says, David was anointed by Samuel. He waited for direction. He knelt down. Why did? It is time you pray. Let prayer precede music. And after David prayed, you know what God told him? Go to Hebron. Because that was where the tribe of Judah was. Only one tribe coronated David. The 11 other tribes, the Bible says they went to Abner. And so David waited and said, we'll wait for God. And finally, very sad news, Abner said, King, I think we need to fight David. Why he keeps running away from propaganda politics and SDA politics, they will still follow you. I know them. I'm in ex of they will come. Then we'll tell them, ah, it's enough, go back. And I'm serious when I say this. Many young people who are gifted to preach and sing, the church has suffocated them. And you see the same musicians now singing in clubs. Because the church does not allow young talent to thrive. In fact, let me put it in a serious way. We have spiritualized the mediocre. Foolish things we pray. Powerful things, no, they need to be ordered. But I want to say the last words to you, Wiley. David was not bothered by others who were rising. Amen? Because he, they, he knew God was going to lift him up. And one day, he, Ishbosheth, hears that, that his girlfriend has been taken by his commander Abner. He calls Abner. Abner, what do I hear? I hear that you are going out with my father's concubine. You know the answer I got? What gives you the right to challenge me? Who put you where you are? Why do you pay attention? Be careful with people who put you above where God has put you. 